What's going on guys? I'm Pete and welcome to Retro Game Attic. I want to do something a little bit different for this episode. I figured I would go over my Virtua Fighter arcade machine straight out of 1993. I want to do a general overview of the arcade cabinet itself, kind of go over how I acquired it and the pros and cons of owning such an awesome piece of Sega machinery. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here it is. So I snagged this off of Facebook Marketplace for 200 bucks, which in my opinion is a total steal for an arcade cabinet. Everything worked out of the box. I really didn't have to fix anything. There were little things here and there that did need work, but overall the whole cabinet worked well. You can see that awesome side art as we zoom out over here. And I'll just get a little walk around. You'll see the side of the unit. It's actually in pretty good shape. It definitely has some city miles on it from probably a lot of play back in the day, but overall it looks pretty good. And then I'll walk around to the other side, and here's a close-up view of that artwork. This side is in a little bit worse shape than the first side, but just take a look at that. That looks awesome. You don't really see side art like this on arcade games anymore. And it's interesting, you can see Jackie and Cage. They appear to be prototype versions of the original characters. They resemble them for sure, but Jackie is not wearing his trademark red shirt. And then Cage kind of has that red headband, which I believe in the game is a black headband. We'll walk around to the back. The rear hatch on the back appears to have been replaced at some point. It's kind of like screwed in there. I'm probably going to work out a better solution for it. It fits in there and it stays in place pretty well. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave it. And then you can see to the left over there, I propped up one of my light rings with an old Trinitron that I will be relocating to the retro game basement in some time. We'll walk around, we'll check out that side art again. And then we'll move around to the front of the cabinet. And check out that marquee. It has that mirror image, and I believe this is glass, so it's pretty fragile. Luckily, this one is fully intact. And you can kind of see that caution tape border. It's kind of like the theme throughout. I mean, check out that artwork. It's so old school. And this is a familiar sign if you're a 90s kid and you've experienced arcades that recycle it, don't trash it from the US EPA. I used to love seeing that. Total time capsule. Everything looks pretty good on the CRT. And here we'll get a close-up of the controls. So when I first bought the cabinet, all of the buttons were kind of spongy and unresponsive. And I believe the second player joystick was totally just done. It worked, but just wasn't responsive. You really had to like manhandle it to get it to work. So what I ended up doing is replacing all the micro switches, which was a pretty straightforward and an easy process. I think I got them off of eBay. I don't remember how much I paid for them, but I do remember searching it out. And to my knowledge, I got a pretty good deal on all of them. But after replacing those micro switches, all the buttons and joysticks are super clicky and responsive now. So success there. I also replaced the locks, which originally I had to pick, which was kind of a pain, but I did figure it out. And there you can see the inside of the coin box. And then underneath there, that's where I housed the replacement micro switches. I have the new and the old ones, so I guess I should probably chuck the old ones. I'll end up bringing those to uh, e-waste recycling, since there are electronic components in them. And it's always good to have a few extra micro switches on hand, so I'll keep those extra new ones for sure. It's pretty awesome having an arcade machine like this, because I do remember seeing this for the first time. It was like 93, 94 at a Chuck E. Cheese of all places, and it was totally mind-blowing to see these graphics coming from an arcade game and it's so amazing to me that I have this in my possession even though it's in my garage and I don't get to play it as much as I used to it's still good to have in my opinion and then I'm gonna pop this open so you can see the underside of the joysticks and the buttons here I'll move that wiring bezel and you can kind of get a little bit of the inside of the unit there I'm gonna go around in a little bit so you can get a good look on the inside but for now just check out the buttons and these are all the micro switches that I replaced and all of them are super clicky now they're so responsive and it was a pretty easy process to just pop the replacement switches in and then you just pop on these two connectors to those metal tabs on each of the micro switches it's a super straightforward process and then we'll close it back up and then here I wanted to show a better look of the bezel it's kind of hard to tell but on the corners of the bezel you can see that there's like a plexiglass which these originally came with glass bezels and this arcade game unfortunately didn't come with it they're like impossible to find I actually did buy one online and when it came to me it was just completely shattered glass so what I did is I found Found the highest resolution scan of the original Virtua Fighter bezel and then found an online printer that printed it onto vinyl and I kind of just sized it out and it's not the highest resolution versus the original one but it's the next best thing and to the untrained eye most people probably wouldn't even notice pretty cool seeing Sonic up in that top left hand corner there that's back when Sega was just jamming him into like every single property that they had pretty awesome though and then just check out the artwork of the characters on the bottom here they're so corny looking I totally love it 
it. And then we're gonna walk around to the back of the unit. So you can see the CRT right here. It was, it was actually replaced or serviced in 7 of 08. And then here's the soundboard and other various electronic workings here. It's pretty cool to see all the aspects of an arcade game. You think of these as not being too complicated, especially for something being this old, but there's a lot going on here. You can see that giant power supply down there with the fan, and I don't have the audio in the video, obviously, but the fan is actually pretty loud once you pop that back open. And it's a little bit dirty in there. I should probably give it another good cleaning. And then here's the Model 1 board that the game's built off of. The thing is massive, and I don't really know much about these. I mean, everything seems to be in good working order, and everything's cleaned up so at that point I'm not gonna touch anything but it's cool you see Sega 1992 made in Japan so I figured now that I have the arcade game I might as well buy the service manual for it which I bought off of eBay for I think like less than 20 bucks which was a total steal so the service manual has pretty much anything you need to know about it. it has like all the parts numbers and the locations of them how to adjust certain things fluorescent lamp replacement test mode the game board assembly it has schematics in there so this thing is paid for itself very quickly but I see suggested to anybody who has an arcade game, track down the original service manual for sure. And what's an arcade video without showing some of the arcade gameplay? So let's do a quick round here. And forgive the glare, I have these LED lights in my garage and this was like the best position for it unfortunately. So we'll start the game here. And as you can see, it runs super smoothly. I do think I need to adjust the focus a little bit more on the CRT. It's probably a little difficult to tell from the video, but I think it needs a little fine tuning. And that's something that I will refer to the service manual to do because it's pretty easy. There's just like a toggle switch on the backside of the CRT that you kind of have to adjust. And I should probably put this out there too. I know a lot of people do know, but there are some that don't. Anytime that you're working on a CRT, even if it's unplugged, they do hold a residual charge. So please be careful and if you don't know what you're doing definitely consult somebody that does it's definitely not worth it to get shocked or potentially worse for an adjustment of a CRT screen definitely consult somebody that knows what they're doing and there it is guys that was the overview of my Virtua Fighter arcade cabinet I'm gonna be honest arcade game ownership isn't as cool as I once thought it was there's definitely some upkeep here and there which I'm totally up for but it does add up after a while there's like little things you have to tweak here and there and the thing takes up an immense amount of space like I said it's relegated to my garage because I don't want to move this thing into my house or I don't want to put it in the basement because I'll probably never get it out of there it's easier to move it down than it is to move it up and out of it but regardless I'm super pumped that I was able to get this thing off marketplace for 200 bucks because like I said when I was a kid this thing blew my mind and the fact that I have it now as an adult and it's set to free play and I can kind of mess around with it whenever I want it's a pretty cool feeling I'm not gonna lie so what did you guys think do you have an arcade cabinet are you looking for one or are you even interested in getting one? Please be sure to let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching Retro Game Attic. I really do appreciate you all. Have an awesome day and stay tuned for the next one.